Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my Jane Austen July TBR. Now, you all know, I'm going to adjust the camera angle on this one. I want to be a bit more accessible. So, you all know that I love Jane Austen July. I've been doing it since I started my channel. It is probably my second favourite readers on of the year, if you don't count my, my ones obviously that I do. And it's one I look forward to every year. Every year I pre-plan my books, I buy extra books. I don't sod in care. I get so excited. As soon this year, as soon as the announcement went out, one of us on the group waffle it was like, the announcements are out. I stopped everything that I was doing. I then went and watched it, the videos. And then I literally, I think I bought one book straight away online because I decided to sod it. I'd been poorly, wanted to buy a book. And then I bought another book online a couple of days later. Both from second hand sites, so I was reasonably sensible. But I spend all year thinking, which Jane Austen July book am I going to read? I get retellings ready. I've got, you know, I literally spend so much time planning it. And I will be doing exactly the same this year. Because I find every Jane Austen July, someone else talks about a different retelling or a different non-fiction book or a different book that I spend all year looking for, getting myself ready. So the hosts for this are Katie from Books and Things, Marissa from Blatantly Bookish and Claudia from Spencer's Library. I will link all three channels down below and that's where you'll find their prompts because I'm slightly lazy and I don't tend to write the prompts down but I will talk about it slowly enough that the prompts are the same every year so I don't really think there is many different so that in their eyes as soon as you read one book by Jane Austen July you are participating. Some people do all of the prompts I don't tend to do the watching prompts but I'm going to try this year because we've got Amazon now so I can watch one of them on Amazon. But let's get on with this. I love the fact that, with it, the fact that there's not too many prompts, this is not going to be a long video. You guys will know for me how long it is. So the first one is read a book, read one of Jane Austen July's six main novels. So I am going to be reading Emma for this because it's my reread. Every year I reread a different one. This was actually the first Jane Austen July book I think I ever read. And I had a battered copy before, and this is my nice copy. So technically, technically it's a re it's not it's a like first time reading it so it'll get counted get crossed off my list and i won a won it won this copy in a birthday giveaway for someone i love this world words editions copy now for a very very long time this was my favorite jane austen emma is the funniest character going she is the most annoying and dappy she has best intentions but she just does things oh, she just does things in the wrong order. And for a long time, this was my favourite. But Pride and Prejudice beat it. So I'm wondering if this will get knocked back up again and become a favourite again when I reread it. So Emma is the hopeless romantic. She does have the best intentions in plan, but she sets romances up and she gets things wrong. And she's very... I think the fact one of the things I love the most about her is the fact she's so fallible. And she has her handsome bloke and she has all these things that she's trying to do. And yeah, I absolutely thoroughly, thoroughly love this book. So I cannot wait to reread it. And now the next one is to read one of Jane Austen's books that isn't one of her main novels. Now they are reading the her Juvenalia. I don't want to do that. I don't want to kill myself off because July is also the month that I'm going on holiday. So I decided that I will reread the beautiful Cassandra for this. And I might see if I can find like some of her short stories. I have got like Lady Susan and I've got other books in collections, but this is nice and short. Short but sweet retelling that won't take me long, but I'm going to do it in a good sitting. I'm going to have a real thoroughly read of it. Prop number three is to read a non-fiction book about Jane Austen or her time. Now, Lucy wallsley has got a book called Jane Austen at Home. The, the hosts have recommended so many non-fiction books. And like I said, I'm going to be looking for non-fiction books. So even though I've got one book that I've ordered that I've now got, I may well, be, I will, may well add more or save one for another year. But I decided that this year I wanted to read something different. Last year I read Jane Austen at Home. This year I'm going to read The Courtiers, The Secret History of the Georgian Court by Lucy Worsley. And it is just packed full of... It's got loads of notes at the back, so it isn't actually that long. But this one's got pictures in it. And I've also got blue. Which I love it. I love it when they've got pictures. And it's just some really pretty pictures. 
and it'll be nice to read more about the Georgian court because I don't know much about the Georgian court. Obviously, I know about the Victorian era. And that's my era that I know the most about, but I don't know much about the Georgian era. So this will be very, very interesting. This is about Kensington Palace, the Vice Chamberlain, Peter the Wild, the servants. This is about behind the scenes of the courtiers. And I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. So yeah, that was like, that was my, I went on ABE books and bought it and I got a very nice copy. But that is also because I had a problem with, the, with one of the other books that arrived that didn't come in good condition. Now the next one is read a retelling of Jane Austen's book or work from uh, his, or a work from a historical fiction set in Jane Austen's time. Now I've got one I'm telling you now and I've got one that I've got another couple of extras that I will be telling you at the end. But I am going to be doing a video in July about Jane Austen July retellings because I've got so many and I've read so many and I've got others that I want to pick up. So this is the one I've chosen because Marissa from Blatantly Bookish loved it. And this is Godmission Park by Jill Hornby. I nearly bought the hardback edition, but I decided to wait because the paperback is pretty, very gorgeous. So Marissa read it last year. I think Casey read it last year. So many people have read it. And I loved Miss Austen by Jane Austen by Jill Hornby. I read her that book a couple of years ago and I loved that. So this one um, is about Anne Sharp who arrives at Godmission Park in Kent to become governess to 12 year old Fanny Austen. But her new role in this large household is an awkward one. And Anne is keenly aware that one wrong move could result in an instant dismissal. Then dashing Henry Austen and his younger sister Jane come to fame. <coughs> Both take an immediate interest in the pretty clever governess and Anne becomes drawn into the Austin family. Soon, and despite her best efforts, she finds herself falling in love. I, this is a book that I've waited all year because it didn't come out in time for me to read it last year. And then when it came out, I knew I had to save it. So this is probably one of my most anticipated books of this whole, so I've got a Lucy Wars Energy and Hornby, both of which I know I love. Then read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen, published between 1775 and 1817. Now, I don't very often do this prompt because I don't tend to find books, but I decided, again, I went on ABE books and I listened to some of the host's advice and I actually spoke to Marissa on Boxer Camille and Marissa are friends. Yes, I'm very honoured that Marissa from Blatantly Book is one of my friends. And there was a choice of a couple of books that I found for quite a cheap price on, um, on Amazon. And the reason why I got this refunded, because look at the copy of that, it was supposed to be a good condition and this was battered and it was actually so I got that money refunded so I'm quite impressed by AB books that they did that but this is Evelina by Francis, Francis Burney now I think Katie has spoken about this before and I think Marissa said that she liked this more than the other option I had and I'd never read it it was a sequel to it was a sequel to Caroline Everin a novel burned by its author wow Evelina is apparently the, the illeg illegitimate daughter of the vanished Caroline and she happily enters into societies much more dangerous than she realises and it's about like, um, and this novel explores the representation and performance of social mores and masks in a world full of distractions and the overturned coaches to golden automata, from opera to malevolent monkeys. It's family romance. I cannot wait. This is one that, I've, that I'm nervous about because I've heard lots of things about Frances Burney and I've look at, been looking for her books for a very long time. And I decided to try it on ABU books and I got it for cheap. So. And then I ended up getting it for free because the, the copy's not very good. Then the next one is to read a direct screen adaptation of Jane Austen book. Now, last year I watched Emma. I had that on DVD. This year I have been able to find Sense of Sensibility on Amazon. There is Persuasion on Amazon, but that has had a lot of, Not Amazon. Why am I thinking Amazon books? That's why. It is from the lovely Duda online, Netflix. Netflix has got Persuasion, but Persuasion has had a lot of mixed reviews, so I decided not to try that. I've watched Pride and Prejudice, I've watched other ones, but I know this year I'm going to try and watch Sense of Sensibility, so I've saved that on my doodah Netflix, and I'm going to try and watch that over the days, but I don't have very many days where the kids are not in, so I'm going to have to stop watching, to stop watching Call the Midwife, which is what I normally watch, and I'm going to watch Sense and Sensibility. And then the next one is to watch a modern screen retelling of the Jane Austen book. If I get time and the kids let me or I get time, I will try and watch Clueless, but that's very much of it if I get time. I'm not that fast. Now, the group books for Jane Austen July are The Her Juvenalia and Northanger Abbey. 
Now, Northanger Abbey is another one of the ones that I, this is actually, whereas Emma is actually one of my favourites, this is previously one of my least favourites, Northanger Abbey. So it's actually one of our shortest ones. So this is my first reread of this. So I'm hoping I will like it a lot more. Now, this is actually her first to be written, but one of the last to be published. And it's set in Bath and Catherine, it's Catherine Moreland. So this is quite a young romantic, Catherine Moreland. And she meets, she meets the sophisticated Helena, Helen, Henry and Eleanor Tilney, who invite her to stay at their father's mysterious house. Apparently it's a bit dark, funny one, and it, um, Catherine is one of her, one of Jane Austen Giles' youngest protagonists. And she falls into danger, imaginary and real, and she learns the difference between books and real life, false friends and true friends. So I'm looking forward to trying this and seeing what I get out of it this time. It's short, so it's one of her shorter books, so that'll be quite good fun. Then I've got two retones that I'm going to try, and then I've got others I'm going to be looking for and talking about in that video. So the first one is one that the lovely Jack from Spread Book Joy bought me for my birthday, and that's Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James. So it's a retelling, but it's a mystery retelling, and a lot of people like this. This year, the year is 1803. Darcy and Elizabeth have been married for six years, and the orderly world of Pemberley seems uns unassailable. But it all is threatened when, on the eve of the annual ball, a chase appears rocking the path from the Pemberley's wild woodland. As it pulls up, Lydia Wickham, Elizabeth's younger and unreliable sister, stumbles out, screaming that her husband has been murdered. Ooh. Had this a while. No, I've only had this since March, but I, I'm so excited by this. And then another one is a contemporary retelling that I got given a few years ago. And this is To Love and To Loathe by Martha Walters. Ugh. This is a contemporary sort of retelling of it. The widowed Diana, Lady Templeton and Jeremy, Marquis of Willington, are infamous for their bickering and their flirtations. Shortly before a, long, a fortnight long house party at Jeremy's country estate, J Diana is shocked when he appears at the home of her unexpected proposition. Now, after finding his latest mistress unimpressed by his bedroom skills, Jeremy suggests it's, it to it that they embark on a brief affair. He trusts Diana to critique him honestly and she'll use the gossip to signal other gentlemen. So to love and to love, I can't remember what this is a retelling of. It's a Regency retelling or a Regency history thing. So this will be intriguing. Apparently there is more books in this series. To have and to hope. So this will be interesting. It's set, obviously, I don't know too much more about this, but it's going to be the one I'm going to use. Another retelling, so I'll be having some fun with that. And we'll see. Ugh, oh, hair in my mouth. So, are uh, these... Ugh, why do I always include silly things? These are the books that I'm going to be reading for the Jane Austen July. What are you going to be reading? What books are you excited about for Jane Austen July? Which one of these should I prioritise in the month? I love talking to you guys in the comments. And thank you so much to the little host for this readathon. Every year I get excited, every year I can't wait, and just roll on July. The best readathon ever. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet, ring on my ding -a -ling. And I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.